one of the things that you can do with your uh, Mesh Studio files, the DAE that is generated when you make the mesh from your prims, is take it to a 3D program. I use Blender. That is my uh, 3D program of choice, in particular for Second Life. And what you do is you go into the File menu, Import, Collada, and on this browser, you'll locate what directory you have your file in and then just open it. I've already got it open, so I'm just going to ignore this and cancel. So here I've got the lectern. I've shown it to you in my blog. You can see it's all made of boxes that have been tapered. And that's pretty nice. Now, I'm going to, it's selected by right clicking and I hit the tab button to go into edit mode. And by default, it's been triangulated because that is the acceptable way that SL brings in meshes. Uh, everything is in triangles, three-sided polygons. And when I have them all selected, this is the UV image editor over on the right-hand side. And you can see that I have UVs here. What you can't see is that they are layered on top of each other. So they will repeat. Um, if you're working with a seamless texture, uh, it, this can be advantageous. But I'm going to show you a few things to look out for and a way that you can go into Blender to work in a slightly different way. So the other thing that I don't care for when I'm working in Blender is working in triangles. I prefer to work in quads, which are four-sided polygons. So I can quickly do this by simply having everything selected. And then I do Alt-J. And this goes through the model and tries to put everything in quads where possible. Now, every, you'll find, even when you do this, that you may have some stray triangles here and there. And you can attempt to fix those. Or if they're out of the way uh, and you're not going to be subdividing and doing other things, it may not present a problem. So um, for the better part, because these were all composed of boxes, it probably went through pretty well, OK? And we've probably got quads everywhere. So now what I'm going to do is I've got a, a texture that I have added. So I've already duplicated this and put it on another layer and added a texture to it. Now, the way that you assign a texture in Blender is you go into Edit on the model, select all the vertices, and then go into your image editor, your UV image editor. And under the image menu here, you can assign a new texture, giving it its width and its height. You can use a UV test grid which helps you see where there is stretching. I have used what we call the alignment texture. Um, and what this does is it, it has a variety of squares and colors. And it just gives you not only is it stretching, but also information as to in which direction things are going, how they repeat, and so forth. OK? So I'm not going to create the new texture here. I've already gone in and opened up instead of new image, I opened up the texture alignment and I put it on the model. Now if you look, you would normally see this texture over here in the UV image editor and you don't. And that's because these UVs are stacked on top of each other. It's a repeating tiled texture. So it repeats everywhere on here. But we don't have a whole lot of control if we just let Mesh Studio figure things out. Sometimes you'll get areas like this right here where it's elongated the texture. Also, if I go into front view, you'll see that some of these are at an angle. Here's a little weirdness over here by the five on this particular one. Oh, it's repeated you know, again. 
you know, because the textures are repeating, so sometimes the errors keep repeating. And this this all has to do with the type of prims that you use. And because these all have tapers, if you've ever worked with tapers in Second Life and tried to texture them, sometimes you'll find that you have to use a planar texture in order to make it work or do other things to your texture. Um, and this is what's happening here. So what can we do? Well, you can work with this and see what you can make it do within the boundaries of what you have, or you can re UV map it. And one of the easiest ways, especially for something like this, it is hard surface and composed of a lot of elements, uh, we can just use smart UV unwrap. So, what that is, is I just go in and I've got everything selected. I press the U key, like under, or unwrap, which brings up the UV mapping menu. We have a lot of different types of UV style that we can use, and I will talk about some of these later on when we get into UVs, but this is Smart UV Project, and it's going to basically try and lay this out as evenly as possible, and it, it will make a lot of different parts. Okay, so let's see what it does. So I'm going to just hit Smart UV Project. I'm going to leave the angle limit as it is. I'm going to give it just a little bit of island margin. Now I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm going to do a 0 0.06. And I say OK. And now what we've got are all these pieces over here. So I'm going to just, you can see that it's still on there, but I'm just going to switch, you can see it under the UV, open up this image again. The texture is a 1024 by 1024. Computer works best with powers of two. And so that means 5 by 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024. You can go larger, but SL is going to sample it down. So you might as well uh, go ahead and work large if you want, but make sure that you upload at the sizes that it'll accept, which are 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024. That's the way it works, and that's the best thing to do. So now we've got this, and you can see that because the pieces are now completely on the 1024 by 1024, the numbers are larger. If I were to take these UVs and scale them up, you'd see on the model the numbers are getting smaller. And the numbers are still everywhere even though the UVs are outside of the image area because it's a tiling texture. If it wasn't a tiling texture, you'd run into some problems. But I'm going to go ahead and control Z to get them back into the live UV area. So now that you have this, notice that the numbers are straighter. You don't have that. Remember when we were looking at it straight on, the numbers were diagonal. These are a lot more even. And you can go through. If I take this, for instance, this will take the one of the pieces here at the base, and I'm going to go into face mode. And if I right click on a face, now you won't see it very readily because it's, it's pretty light and it's pretty small on the map. But this is all one box that was tapered. So I'm going to go ahead and select all four sides. And there it is right here on the map. So if I pull out, you can see that's the amount of area that it takes up. And if you wanted to create some patterning on this, uh, on this particular area, you can see that that's where you're going to texture. So that's one way of working with your day files, which is what we call the DAE files for short. Colada day files, day files, and you can take it into Blender and do this 
if you want to have some more control over your textures and um, uh, that hopefully will give you a little bit more information on what you might do. I will have links on uh, the basics of Blender. Uh, I'm available in the I'm available in the Sweet Meshes group. Uh, I'm, I also moderate the Blender group, and uh, you can also leave questions on the blog. I'll try and get you information if you need it, but. Uh, I want to make sure that you have a, an understanding of how things work because the more information you have, the more power you have. So, so happy meshing and if you end up working in Blender, happy blending.